Hi, I'm Lisa Scherer Lambert, and I teach the workshop on an introduction to longitudinal data. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of what that workshop is about, and how we go about it, so that uh, you can understand the topics that are covered. Every time that we have an, an X that leads to a Y, we have an arrow going from one to the other, we are specifying a model of change over time. We are saying that X sets in motion a process that results in a change in Y, and that change has to occur over time. Our theories rarely ever specify how much time, a couple seconds, a couple years, not really sure. And we know that we're not supposed to test it with cross-sectional data, yet we often do. Uh, and yet, even if we measure X at time one and Y at time two, that's not sufficient for really uh, testing whether we have actually found change over time. So we start off by covering how we need to go about theoretically uh, clarifying, explaining what our theory is, is about, what the causal processes are, and how we define the kind of change that we would expect to see. But then we also talk about the temporal model that goes along with that theoretical model, where we have to specify over what time frame is that going to occur. And we match that on to a statistical model, which is the way we're going to go about statistically testing, generating empirical evidence that would show whether or not we found that change over time. All three of those models need to agree with each other. So we begin the workshop by talking about the statistical, temporal, theoretical models and explaining how they need to correspond precisely to each other. But then we go and, and look at a number of different approaches for how change over time has been tested. And we spend a little time doing exercises in each one so that you get some hands-on practice with each kind. So we'll look at uh, some old change score models for looking at change over time. And we'll, we'll see the kinds of change that they can test and the kinds that they don't. Because here's the trick, every kind of statistical model for, for testing longitudinal data, um, it embodies assumptions about what change is. And these models are good at testing certain kinds of change, but they're oblivious to evidence of other kinds of change. So after we learn a statistical approach, we need to just remind ourselves, theoretically, what are we trying to test? What are we likely to see in that data? What temporal model is going to be present. And then we go, go back and we learn another statistical approach. So we do some of the older fashioned regression models very briefly. Uh, and then we move on to repeated measures regression and panel models. Panel models both in regression and uh, in SEM. Uh, and then we also cover uh, growth modeling and some random coefficient modeling as well. Um, at the same time, we also spend a, a little bit of a detour into measurement equivalence and invariance because one of the problems with testing longitudinal data is that if the construct itself changes over time, then we don't know if we're testing change that's being caused by variable X or other independent variables or whether it's the nature of the Y of the dependent variable itself that is changing over time. So that's why we need to look at measurement, equivalence, and invariance as well. The class is interactive. Uh, I come with data sets, and you can do exercises on those data sets. You can also bring your own data. Uh, we have plenty of time for questions, because once we start to investigate different approaches for testing change, it prompts most of us to think about, well, what if I changed my model to this? Uh, what if I plan a data collection for that? and we get to explore those different variations. Remember, this is the an introduction to longitudinal models, uh, so it's a really good workshop to take if you have your first longitudinal data set, or even better, if you're planning your first longitudinal data collection. Uh, most people, by the end of the workshop, have a much better understanding of where they want their theory to go, how they want to design and plan for their longitudinal data collection, and a much better understanding of how they're going to go about testing it when they get it. It's a lot of fun. I love teaching it, and I hope to see you there.